What's going on everyone? In this video, I'm going to be giving you 10 video mistakes that people make, in particular when it comes to making YouTube videos. So buckle up, strap in, and let's get to it. Mistake number one is filming in the wrong frame rate. Now there are gonna be different reasons why you wanna film in different frame rates, but when it comes to videos like this, where it's just you and the camera and your audience, all you're gonna to wanna to do is film in 24 frames per second. You don't wanna film in any other frame rate, 24 frames per second is what you wanna use. If there are other moments in your video where you wanna show something or a nice B-roll sequence, then bumping up your frame rate isn't gonna be bad, but when you're talking just in front of the camera, sticking to 24 frames per second is gonna be your best option. Here's an example of a sequence that's shot in 24 frames per second. And then um, right after that, I'm gonna show you the same sequence shot in 60 frames per second. Now you may not be able to see a difference right away, but if I slow down this footage, you're gonna be able to see a significant difference between the two clips. Now I know this might not seem like a huge deal at first, but the more you use YouTube, the more you're in YouTube, the more you're gonna see that the little things like frame rate are gonna make a huge difference with all of your videos. Mistake number two that a lot of people make in their videos for YouTube is having too high of an ISO. ISO is a setting that you rarely need to touch. And if you're not exactly sure what ISO is, take a look at this video that I made here that explains the basic photography terms and this relates to videos as well but these are all terms that you should know as a beginner using a camera but simply put the setting of ISO simply brightens or darkens the image that you're seeing in your camera now what you're seeing right here is a very low ISO now if I change the ISO to a much higher huh, give me a second let me do that now I've changed the camera settings around and as you can see the image is much brighter you're a little closer to my face. That's just how the manual settings work sometimes with this camera. Uh, I don't really know how to explain that, but when it comes to the ISO, as you can tell, the image is just brighter. And that is something that can be very harsh to look at as a consumer of videos. Now, as you can see, I'm back to the original settings that I was on before I made the changes to the ISO. Now, why is having a high ISO a problem? It's because when you see an image that's way too bright, it's just not gonna be appealing to look at. And something else that a high ISO does is introduce grain or noise into your videos. Now what is this exactly? Grain is just exactly what it sounds like. It's grain in your image. It's kind of like seeing TV static around the image, but you're still seeing me, but you can just see that there's little sparkly things all around your image. Man, I just said image a lot in that sentence, but hey. Got to get the point across, right? So yeah, when it comes to ISO, try to keep it as low as possible so that you introduce as little grain and noise as possible into your videos. All right, so I decided to switch up the style a little bit. Eh, you know, just give you guys a different look. So the next mistake, which is mistake number three, and that is using auto settings. Using auto settings too much, relying way too much on auto settings. Now, I'll, I'll, I'll be the first to admit that I am very guilty of using auto settings way too much, but it's kind of hard to avoid the convenience of it, you know, because most of the time when you're doing videos where you're just sitting down in front of the camera, using auto settings is going to give you the result that you need. So I can understand why it's easy to fall into the auto settings trap. However, using auto settings too much in certain situations is going to be a negative and it's going to hurt you in the end because the only way you can grow as a video maker is to really branch out and try and use some manual settings because when you're using manual settings you're forcing yourself to learn exactly how you need to set certain things up on your camera you know exactly what you need to change on your camera to get the look that you're going for so yeah Try not to get stuck in the auto settings trap. I understand that it's very difficult not to get stuck in that trap sometimes, 
But you always have to remember that if you want to grow as a video maker, especially for YouTube, try to branch out and start using manual settings. And since I'm talking about branching out into manual settings, this is leading me to my next mistake that a lot of people make when it comes to making videos for YouTube, and that is overexposing or underexposing their image. Now, if you're somebody that uses auto settings, a lot of the time you're not gonna have an image that's overly exposed or way too underexposed, but the camera's not always gonna be perfect. There's gonna be times where the auto settings don't do you justice and it's not gonna give you the type of exposure that you really need or want out of what you're trying to film. So this is where manual settings comes into play. But again, when it comes to manual settings, it can take a good amount of practice to actually get the type of exposure that you wanna get. Now, when it comes to exposure, there's three different settings that you need to be aware of, and that is ISO, shutter speed, and aperture. Now, all three of those settings are gonna affect the exposure that you see in your videos. So if you give me a minute, I'm gonna show you exactly how all three of these settings can affect the exposure of your image. All right, so the first setting that I'm affecting is shutter speed. This is what it looks like when I'm at the fastest possible shutter speed that I can get. And this is how the exposure changes when I go on the opposite end of the spectrum and go at the slowest shutter speed that I can get. Moving on to aperture, this is how the exposure is affected when I move to the smallest aperture setting. And this is how the exposure is affected when I'm at the largest aperture setting. Moving on to ISO, when I have the camera set to its highest ISO setting, this is how the exposure is affected. And this is how the exposure is affected when I'm at the lowest possible ISO setting. So it can be very easy to overexpose or underexpose an image. These are things that you can possibly change in post when you're editing your footage, but it's much harder to get the exact exposure when you're trying to edit within the footage. So making sure you have the right exposure right away when you're filming is something that is gonna be key to making the best possible looking video. All right. So my fifth mistake that a ton of people make when they're making their YouTube videos is something that comes in the editing process and that is they do not color grade their footage. Now, I'll be the first to admit that color grading was something that I neglected for a long time simply because I didn't think it had that much of an effect on what I was putting out there. However, after having some footage and color grading just a little bit, you can tell that there is a huge difference between footage that is color graded and footage that isn't color graded. So what is color grading your footage? Now, if we take a look at my screen here, you can see that this is just the normal footage. There's no color grade or anything on it. So this is just how it would normally look. However, if I put a LUT over it or some sort of color grade over this image, this is how the footage is going to look throughout the rest of the video. Now, why is color grading important? It's important because it gives your footage and everything that you're filming a certain type of look to it. Everyone has their own kind of style and that can be translated through the types of color grading that you do with your footage. So color grading is something that is also gonna help you down the line with your audience and if you potentially wanna grow your audience because people are gonna recognize this type of color grading and when they recognize that, they're gonna associate that type of color grading with you and that is just a positive which leads to much more people following you in the end. And that's basically what YouTube's all about, right? You wanna get as many subscribers as possible and if you can do that, you're winning at YouTube. Also, that reminds me, be, be, be sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already because uh, I know if you made it this far in the video, you, you kinda like what's going on. So yeah, don't wait till the end of the video, just just subscribe right now. Just, just, just do it, it, it takes two seconds. Now moving back to this angle because I think it's perfect to talk about the next mistake and that is mistake number six. Mistake number six is not using lighting. Lighting is gonna always be one of the most important aspects of any video that you're shooting. And if you don't understand the importance of lighting, I'll put a link to a video that I made up here. Click on that and you'll understand the importance of lighting whether you're using it for photography or video. But anyways, the mistake that a lot of people make is not using proper lighting. When you have proper lighting, everything else becomes a little easier. And when everything about your video becomes a little easier, that just makes the flow of everything go a lot easier, and it just makes for a lot easier video in the end. So for example, you see all the lights in the background, but I also have lights in the foreground that you can't see that's off camera, and those are the lights that are shining on me. If I turn these lights off, as you can see, there's an immediate change and you can't really see me too well. 
and you're not gonna wanna see a whole video of me where it's just basically a silhouette of me and you just have the lights on in the background. Hence why you have the lights on in the foreground and the lights on in the background. When you combine these two together, they work together in a way that shows off the details in the front and the back of the entire scene. You can see all the details in my face and you can see the little details that you need to see in the background. The reason I want you to see the little details in the background is because I don't want you to just be staring at a black hole. Now when the lights are off in the background, you'll see nothing but me. Now for this type of video, that's gonna be extremely weird. With other types of videos, that might be okay because you might be wanting to set that type of dark mood. However, that's not the type of mood that I wanna display in this type of video, hence why the lights are on in the background. Lighting is gonna make a huge difference whether you're using artificial light or natural light. And using it effectively is only gonna help make your videos that much better. Now my sixth mistake that I'm gonna discuss is having poor audio. Now, that is one of these mistakes that is probably my biggest pet peeve because I feel like having good audio is something that is very simple to do. So, when you have poor audio in your videos, that is just gonna be a huge turnoff for me and I'm sure a lot of other potential subscribers that you could have for your channel. Now, as you can tell now, I have good audio because I'm using a good microphone, uh, a little lapel mic, as I'm sure you can see it. It is a very good microphone, not too expensive, it's relatively inexpensive actually, and there are a ton of different types of microphones that you can use to get good audio for your videos. It doesn't matter what type of camera you're actually using, whether you're using a little Canon EOS R like I am, or whether you're using a smartphone to record everything that you're doing. Come on, Valkyrie. Help me out here. Right. Now, if you wanna hear a good example of poor audio, I will turn off my lapel mic right now. Give me a second. So now I'm using the microphone that is within the camera. It's not nearly as good for some people, it may not be that much of a difference, but there's a huge difference for people that are continually doing something like this in a creative space where they're making their own videos and seeing other people's work. So when you're in a space like this and you're hearing audio quality that's like this, you're gonna know and recognize that it's not nearly as good as it should be. So I have my microphone back on. As you can tell, the sound is definitely a little better than what it was a few seconds ago, but so yeah, sound is something that really isn't that difficult to correct because there are so many different microphones that you can choose from. There are a ton of microphones that are very inexpensive that you can buy. And I think it's, this is a good investment if you wanna have YouTube as a future type of career and you wanna do YouTube full time, having and investing little pieces of equipment like this could really take you a long way. And if you need help on different types of microphones that you can use, I'll put a link to a few in the description below. Moving on to mistake number eight, and I'm switching back to this vlogging style because I think it fits in perfectly with the mistake I'm about to tell you about, and that is having shaky footage. Now, having shaky footage is something that you never wanna have, and this holds especially true for vlogging type style videos because just shaky footage like this, it just doesn't appeal to anybody. Nobody likes to see shaky footage. So when you can have stabilized footage like this, you're gonna have a much better looking video and it's just not gonna be annoying to watch for however long somebody can actually handle looking at a video that is completely shaky. So yeah, that is a very simple mistake. I think it's very easy to correct. A lot of cameras have in-camera stabilization and you can also use a stabilizer in your editing software because most editing softwares nowadays have stabilizing features. So yeah, make sure you have as steady footage as possible. Stay away from the shaky footage. And if you have shaky footage, if possible, do the take over again so that you just have a better take in the end. Moving on to mistake number nine, and that is picking any random song for your video. Now I'm sure if you've watched enough videos about how to make a YouTube video, then you've heard that having music only enhances your videos that much more. However, the music you select for your video can't just be random, it has to fit with your video. I understand that it's very easy to pick any song that you want just because it sounds good to you, but if it doesn't match the video that you're trying to make, then things are just gonna be completely thrown off. Your audience is more than likely gonna hear your music no matter what. So having a song that goes with what you're trying to tell them will only make them pay attention to what you're telling them that much more. 
But if you pick any random music that doesn't go with what you're trying to tell your audience or doesn't match the mood that you're trying to set for your video, your audience is gonna be confused and when you have confusion, that just leads to a lot of problems and a lot more disinterest. And in the end, you're not gonna have as many people watching your video as you would hope. And trust me, I know from experience that picking the right song can take some time, but this is an aspect that you should be very patient about. Because once you find that right song, you know you're gonna be on the right path to having a much better video than you would if you didn't have the perfect song to match your video. Now my 10th and final mistake that a ton of people make when making videos, especially for YouTube, is not telling a story. They neglect the story of the video. Every video that you watch should have a story from beginning, middle to end. The reason you need to have a story is because it grasps the attention of your audience. Having a good beginning, having a good middle, and having a strong ending helps hold the audience in place for the entire duration of your video. Now I'll be the first to tell you that making a good story for your videos isn't gonna be the easiest thing to do. Hence why most of the time your videos are gonna be improving a lot over time. Your first video is never gonna be your best video. And this is also a big reason why it takes people a lot of time to build up their audiences with YouTube over a good extended period of time. Learning how to tell a good story takes a lot of time. You may think you're a great storyteller, but when it comes to incorporating that into the videos into a specific niche, it could take a little bit longer than you expected. And nothing's wrong with that. As long as you're improving yourself with each video, things are gonna get better over time. When I look back at my first video, I feel like I am leaps and bounds ahead of what I was back then. And if I look at this specific video a year from now, I'll probably be saying the same exact thing about this video compared to that video. Your storytelling ability will naturally get better the more you do videos. And that's a reason why you can't get discouraged with this whole YouTube thing. YouTube takes time, YouTube's not easy, but if you stick with it, you will get success through it at some point. Whew. We made it, people. 10 video mistakes that people make, especially when it comes to YouTube, that is the entire list. None of that was too difficult, right? None of those mistakes were too hard to overcome. All of these are easy mistakes that you can easily overcome if you're really paying attention to what you're doing with all of your videos. And you know how I said earlier in the video, you should probably hit that subscribe button. Well, I'm gonna say it again. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, and if you really like this video, be sure to hit that like button as well. And my question for all of you, what video mistakes do you see yourself making when it comes to this whole YouTube thing? There are a ton of different mistakes that I know I make sometimes and I know a lot of other people make sometimes, but I wanna hear what specific mistakes you feel that you're making with this entire YouTube thing. So be sure to leave that in the comments below. And if you wanna know about any of the equipment that I mentioned in this video, all of that will be in the description below as well. And on that note, I have nothing else for you. Until the next video, take it easy. Peace.